Hey, what's up guys? John from Old Reading Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, we're going to tell you the 10 things we learned during our first year of beekeeping. Let's get to work. Number one, it's really expensive. So we did a video and I'll link it up in the corner and down in the description um, of what it costs to get started beekeeping. Um, and we, when we started, we had to set up the electric fence that you see here and we got these two hives. Um, these two on the outside are our original hives. Um, and I think all in total it cost about a thousand dollars to get started which includes everything the electric fence the bees the hives all that kind of stuff so it's expensive number two everyone's got an opinion just like everything else everybody has an opinion when it comes to bees and there's an old saying where you ask two beekeepers the same question and you'll get three different answers so when it comes to everything from feeding your bees to uh, mite treatments, to treatments at all, you're gonna hear a bunch of different things. So what I've found is you can try to find, you know, one person, uh, namely our uh, beekeeping mentor, Stan, that we got through our local beekeepers association. Um, you just kind of find someone who is trustworthy and knows what they're talking about, uh, especially in your area and you just kind of follow what they say and you see what works for you because everybody's bees are different. Um, you know, our bees are very gentle so like I can be over here without a veil or anything like that and they're gonna, for the most part, just leave me alone. Um, we've only gotten stung a handful of times and for the most part that was, you know, an accident. It was never something like they were aggressive. Um, and you know, some people, they can't even go near their hives without wearing full gear, so. It's, it's always going to be different, there's always going to be a little bit of variation uh, between bees and between beekeepers, so just be ready for that. Number three is try to catch a swarm. Um, we actually have a video on building a swarm trap and capturing a swarm. This hive right here is a swarm that we captured, um, and so I'll, I'll link that video on, on how we did it up in the corner and in the description below, but basically it's it's you know, free bees, because bees swarm all the time uh, in spring and fall, and they may be wild bees, they might be somebody's bees who just flew the coop, um, but you know, it's, it's pretty easy to set up a swarm trap, and if you can offset the cost of beekeeping by getting, getting yourself a free, you know, set of bees, you should definitely do it. So one of the most valuable things, I've, uh, what, what number is this? Number four, take the class, and get a mentor. Uh, one of the biggest helps that I've had in my beekeeping career this year has been uh, getting a mentor who's local. Um, and the other thing was taking the class with our local beekeepers association. Um, it's 50 bucks to take the class and join the association where I am. Um, and you know, I was able to take an in-person course before all, all this you know, virus stuff happened this year in 2020 and it was insanely helpful. You know, there's, like I said earlier, there's a lot of opinions out there, um, but it's really helpful to get, you know, to get to know the local beekeepers and to know what works for them, because that's generally what's gonna work best for you. Like I said earlier, bees can change, you know, depending on your location and where you're at and what time of year and what kind of bees you get, but the best kind of information you can get is from uh, local beekeepers with experience, and that's what a beekeepers association and a mentor will mean for you. Number five, bees aren't scary, or at least as scary as you might think. Um, for the most part, bees will leave you alone as long as you're not bothering them, which may seem counterintuitive when you're breaking open their homes and pulling apart frames and stuff like that. Um, and again, this is true for us, we ended up having some very, very gentle, friendly bees. Um, you can see, again, I'm, I'm sitting right here without a mask, without any kind of protection, and they're just leaving me alone. Um, but, you know, we've, we've gone in there and, and done full, big hive inspections all the way down to the brood chamber with no issues. Um, we even had my mother-in-law came over one time for a bee inspection. She was terrified, so we gave her the whole suit and everything, and it was super interesting. She, she had a great time, um, and just, you know, Bees aren't as scary as you think. So this is one of those things that uh, people have a lot of opinions on. But number six, it's really complicated and there's a lot to know. Um, 
some people will say, you know, beekeeping is natural and you just kind of let it happen. Um, but where we are in the Northeast in Connecticut, it's really important to, to make sure everything is set up for the winter. So there's just a lot to know when to feed the bees, how much to feed the bees, how often, how often to go in there, when to treat for mites, uh, how to know that they have enough stores for winter, and then preparing them for winter, getting them through the winter, all that kind of stuff. How to know when to add a new box. So there's just a lot to know. Number seven, <laughs> bees are cool. Um, they're, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, when we first got our bees and we installed them, I was very scared at first. Um, but we got them all installed and they were all good. And then, you know, we did our first inspection a week later and I just kept wanting to go in there week after week after week. Like, I just couldn't get enough of the bees. I thought they were so cool. Um, they're just super interesting. And the, the way that they do stuff is cool and they're cool. It's so number eight. <laughs> this is eight? Yeah, that's what comes after seven. <laughs> number eight is uh, we like Hoover hives. So we are actually in the affiliate program with uh, Hoover Hives, and so you can see we have three of them here. Um, but we love them. They're they're you know really cost effective. You can get like the full setup um, really inexpensively, and it's all really high quality hardware and woodware, um, and it comes with everything you need to put them together: the frames, the foundation, the woodenware, the top everything you could possibly need for a full setup of hives, two deeps and a honey super. And like, I just can't, can't go over them enough. I'll have details in the description uh, where you can get a discount on Hoover hives if you're looking to get your first hive. Um, so check that for sure. Number nine, which we found out in our last bee video is that pollen is for protein and nectar is for carbs. So we put up a video uh, a while ago about uh, just doing our one of our last inspections for the fall before in the winter to make sure that our bees had enough stores. Um, and Catherine asked me what pollen was for and what nectar was for, and I didn't know. But uh, so we put that to uh, to you guys to answer, and one of the people commented and told us that pollen is for protein and nectar is for carbs. Learning new stuff every day. Uh, number ten, everyone should have bees. And I understand if you're allergic, maybe you don't want bees because they're you know you're allergic, but. Um, they're so much fun, they're so cool, and they're so beneficial, and you know, they're just so beneficial to the entire world, they're so much fun to have, and they're so easy, and just cool, and awesome. So everybody should have bees, right? Who shouldn't have bees? Maybe if, maybe, maybe if you're allergic, don't get bees. But everybody else, you should have bees. Thank you guys very much for watching this video, we really appreciate it. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and as always, please subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. Bye!